today everyone this is Michael out in Maui um, today I thought I'd talk a little bit more on the wrist snap it seems that uh, a lot of people are looking up the wrist snap on how to generate more power on the throw so I thought maybe try to get a little more into the wrist snap and how to develop more power so one of the first things about the wrist and the power from the wrist is a good grip. Your grip has to be really strong. You got to hold on to the disc as hard as you can. When the disc rotates, you know, around from your fingers, as these three fingers release off the disc, it's these two fingers that are you know, getting the, the disc to snap around to the release. So it ends up being, these have dropped off, these two are here, and then that's when you would release the disc when it's on the line. So it's imperative to have a really strong grip. I recommend the thumb up high and just really strangulate it. I mean, just white knuckle it. Second is, how much wrist should you put on there? Um, you know, should you have just a little bit of it wrist angle? You know, should you cup it? I think a lot of that depends on the style of what's comfortable for you. If you cup it all the way around, you know, as you come through, you got to get that rotated all the way around with the timing of the throw for you. So I don't like to overly cup it just because it's just too much to get it all the way back around. Um, but some of that's just, you'll just have to mess with, you know, just a small, short little kick, you know, or a little stronger, or all the way back into the wrist. So I would just mess around with different spots. So when you're on the tee off pad and you take your grip, you know, put your wrist at different angles every time. You know, maybe one time not so strong, you know, and then a little stronger, you know, all the way. And just see what's comfortable, you know, for you and your throw. Because it's all about getting it as fast as you can from here to here, you know, and get that snap. But, you know, depending on how much wrist movement you want. So that'd be like the first thing I'd really try to pay attention to is how much angle you're putting on with your wrist. The second, probably most important part about the throw is when your elbow tucks in, because you reach back and then this elbow comes in you know to your side and then your arm comes around so your forearm is pivoting around your elbow so you come in and then your forearm pivots around then the wrist snaps the throw so when you're pulling through the most important part of the whole pull through on the release is on the second half you know after you reach back this can be slow like when you run up when you run up and you do your X step to here that all can just be at a tempo you know whatever speed you like you know so if you want a fast tempo you know you come in and you're right here you know so that's just up to you but the tempo doesn't really have as much impact on the follow-through so when you run up you reach back and when you stride forward and you start pulling the disc this pull from here to the release has to be as fast as you can pull I mean that's where all your power is from here to there in the snap is the throw so when you when you come up to throw this can be slow you don't have to have a fast reach back or a fast run up you just need to get yourself to here and then when you transfer your weight is where all the all of it happens so from here you pull the elbow in as fast as you can and then this arm fires you know out and the wrist snaps so this is the most important part is the elbow coming in forearm around wrist snap that 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 right there is the whole throw that's what you have to develop you need this to be as fast as possible so right to here 
snap. That all has to be the fastest you can go. To get there and throw fast, you have to train yourself. You know, um, like a baseball, an infielder doesn't have an outfielder's arm. Because an infielder only trains his arm, you know, to throw 90 feet, you know. So an infielder throws the ball 90 feet, and that's it. An outfielder's got to be able to throw from the warning track to home plate, which could be over 300 plus feet. So an outfielder practices throwing farther. And you have to do the same thing. You know, if you always just practice at this speed, you know, then you got an infielder's arm. You know, that's, that's your speed. If you want to push it further, you need to develop an outfielder's arm. Outfielders, you know, you have to practice to get that distance. Um, an outfielder's arm doesn't just happen. Those guys, you know, you got to train and get yourself to have an outfielder's arm. Throwing the disc is the same thing. When I was learning, all I used to do, once I learned how to throw, all I used to do is go on the course or on the field and try to throw as far as I can. Everything I had, I would just rip into the disc. I would just sit here, everything I had, hard as I could, rotate through, and I would throw like that for an hour, you know, easy. Um, the whole idea is you need to train yourself to go to a faster speed. You need to get to where this is really fast. And the only way to get your arm from here to here fast is to keep training it. Sometimes people think it's the run up. You know, when you run up, you know, it's still just motion. Um, there's a guy on the who plays in the tournament on, you know, the YouTube on the tour. And he has the fastest run up out of anybody in disc golf. He'll literally start like 15 feet behind the pad and just get running. And he'll run all the way up to the pad. He'll throw the disc and he goes flying off the front of the pad. Oh, and he grunts. He says it makes him throw farther. So anyways, you know, so he has the fastest run up out of anybody. No one, no one touches him on how fast to run up. Yet he's not considered a long thrower. You know, he's not even in the top echelon of distance throwers. He's just, you know, the average thrower. Um, he gets a lot of his distances by flipping the disc. Um, a pure thrower who can throw, you know, let's say 500 feet, there's guys out there that could throw that on a complete hyzer. That means the disc is just staying over on that angle. You know, they're releasing it from here on this angle and, and they're pushing it 500 feet. That, those guys have like just, you know, super strong arms. I mean, to be able to throw on a hyzer 500 feet is incredible. Most people have to flip the disc to get that distance. So what they'll do is they'll run up and they'll turn the disc over so it's flying this way. So they'll come in, they'll release it, and the disc will fly to the right first, then flatten out, and then come in and land. Because they don't have the ability to just throw 500 feet straight ahead. They have to manipulate the disc. And that's like everybody. I mean, that's the normal. Um, the guys who can just pump it out there, that's the, you know, they're the elite. Um, but the, the normal would be to hyzer flip it. You flip it up, get it to flat, you know, and you get your distance like that. Um, so the run up is not really what matters. It's the tempo that you have. Being consistent is what it's all about. So when you run up and you reach back, this can be slow. You know, you can come in slow right here, but when you get this front foot down, this arm has to come in as fast as you can and just snap. You know, everything you have 
has to turn. The other thing that's uh, very important is the shoulder turn. A lot of times people don't rotate the shoulders enough. You'll get here, but you can see my shoulder right there. So they'll come up and you'll reach back, but you see my shoulder? That means I haven't fully engaged my hips. So that's the other big one. You need to engage your hips. And that's by rotating your shoulders completely on the back, on the reach back. So when you're coming in and you're reaching back and this shoulder's just right here, you know, you're losing all your power. So when you come in, you reach back, this shoulder needs to come all the way up. See my hands on top of my head over here? You know, that's where my shoulder is. It's way up here. And what that does is it engages your stomach muscles. So instead of being just like this, where I'm only just kind of doing my shoulder, see? The rest of my body isn't doing anything. See, this is just sitting here. But if I come in, reach back, and engage this arm, pull this arm up. If you use your left arm, bring it up. Don't let your arm just dangle, because then you don't get the reach back. So come in, bring this arm up here. So then you're coming in, it looks like this. You know, you come in, you're in your X step, you reach back, this arm's up here. See, now I have full rotation of my shoulders, and my stomach is tightened. Because I'm torquing on it with my shoulders, all my stomach muscles have now tightened up. So I'm like a spring. So now I'm here. My arm is way up here, shoulders are completely turned. My stomach is tight. So I'm from here, and then I uncoil. See, when I plant this front foot, now I'm here, and I have to uncoil to there. That's the throw. So a lot of times, you know, we're just not engaging the body into the complete power that you know, you need to generate. So you gotta make sure when you come in, you engage the whole shoulders and get that hip turned. You know, you're way back here. This arm is back, reach back. That's where it is, right here, there. You know, it's just all the way back and then uncoil as fast as you can. So you're here with all that tension on the stomach and then it's just, as fast as you can, you rotate back around. Very important for throwing, throwing long. Make sure you get a full rotation. Um, so, yeah, what else? Uh, very, you know, like you say, you know, keeping the wrist down also, obviously, got to keep the nose down to get the flight out of the disc. Um, one of the other things is like the grip. You know, a lot of times, you know, like you'll pull these three fingers in to hold the disc tight into your palm. And when you get out here, you know, they release. These three fingers aren't necessarily need to strangle the disc. They're, they're not really helping a whole lot. Um, you know, they kind of help stabilize the disc, you know, a little bit, but these two fingers are the hold. You come in, you lock those two fingers in, and that's your grip right there. These fingers here could be relaxed. You know, you can just hold your hand there because, like I said, all it is is the release. You know, when the disc is coming around, those let go. So if you have a super tight grip on these fingers, it's not going to let your hand snap as quick, you know, because you got all your hands tight. You know, if you're white knuckling your whole hand, it's kind of hard to release it. So when you're holding your grip, you want these two fingers are holding the grip. You know, you're, you're strangulating the disc with those two. These three can be loose. You know, just, just light, you know, like light and then tight. So that way, when you're pulling through, you can get these fingers off your disc because you want to get those fingers off so the disc can snap around. So you're just over, you know, you're over gripping it. You know, because like you say, you know, if I'm gripping like that and I'm all white knuckled, that's harder for me to release my hand like that than if I'm only holding these two. See, I can release the bottom three real easy, yet I still have 
total control of the disc. You know, so don't over over strangulate these three fingers. It's just to help hold the disc into your palm. That's all it does. They're not really part of the throw. Um, I'll go, I'm going to do some throwing at the end of the video, and I'm going to tape these fingers out of the out of my throw. And I'm just going to throw with these two fingers. You know, just going to hold the disc like this with no fingers, and it's like I say, it, it'll fly perfect. And it really helps get the snap going too, because you can kind of feel it better, because you don't have those fingers on the disc. So if you watch at the end of the video, I'll do some throwing with these fingers not even holding on to the disc, because like I said, they're not, they're just there to help hold the disc, you know, into your palm. Sometimes when I throw, I mean, a lot of times I'll keep it loose back here because I just want my wrist firing. I don't want to over strangulate, you know, the wrist because then you're slower. You know, you need to be tight when the, you need to be loose until you tighten up for the throw. So if I'm holding it tight here, these fingers can be loose and see now my wrist is a lot looser. If I tighten all these fingers up, you know, I'm just strangulating my wrist. You see now my wrist is slower. So sometimes I'll actually take my grip and I'll leave the back of it out of my palm. I won't even tuck it into the palm. I'll just leave it loose. And you just take your grip and it's just there. Just kind of hold it. You know, like I said, it's just the powers of those two fingers. And, and that's your snap right there. Um, so also, you know, so the speed of the run up doesn't really matter. If you want to throw harder, you need to practice hard. You got to practice throwing harder. Um, you got to make sure you engage your shoulders all the way back. Get this arm. Just use your left arm. Get it back. Keep your head on top. You know, get back. Keep that arm bent. And then you'll feel it all through your stomach. And then as you uncoil is, is the throw. And this arm ends up, you know, on top of your head. Here. Um, and then also manipulating the disc would help also but we'll talk about that on something else because that's not really part of the grip that's just uh, manipulating the disc you know forcing it over as they call it um, so anyways I hope some of that helps some more with the grip and uh, this is Michael out in Maui Aloha